Hi everyone, this is Jules and I'm an education intern at the Palmer Museum of Art. Welcome back to Online Art Club. Today we will be looking at different ways artists use texture. Many artists use texture in their artworks. Textures can be hard, soft, scratchy, smooth. There are lots of different textures. Sometimes it's physical and if you could and you could touch it and you would feel the thick paint strokes or other materials on the canvas or sculpture. In art, this is called actual texture. Other times, artists use different methods to create the visual illusion of texture. This is called simulated texture. We will be looking at some works in the Palmer's permanent collection that illustrate texture and see how we can use it in our own art. In this painting by Albert William Chris Janer, the artist uses mixed media to create texture in this painting. We can see the ridges of color and it looks as if there are folds or bubbles in the paper. The colors are concentrated at the center of the work, making the painting appear as if a crater or maybe a mountain is there. The artist uses paint in a similar way. By laying down thick brush strokes, the paint rises off the canvas. While the scene is abstracted, by using texture, the artist creates the feeling of crevices in the rocks and waves in the ocean. This painting, titled The Last Cow, is filled with texture. Thick lines of paint are used to render the sky, the grass, and the figures. Imagine if you could touch any of these paintings. What do you think they would feel like? Other artists use texture in a way that maybe can't be felt physically but can be seen and imagined. This print, titled Provincetown Bay, is flat and without a buildup of paint on the surface, but the artists use many different types of lines to create the illusion of different textures and materials pictured. Here is another example of a print that replicates texture. All of the tiny dots almost look like sand. The artists use these dots to create the effect of grittiness in the flat print. This print reminds me of a ball of yarn, as if I could reach at down and untangle it. The swirls of white on the black background seem to rise out of the paper. This print by Chuck Close shows simulated texture in a more obvious way. Close used carving techniques called lino cut to replicate shadows and highlights. Lino cut is a form of printmaking where the artist carves into a block. The block then has an image carved into it, but when printed, the image is actually flat with a seemingly rough or bumpy texture that reflects the carving. We can still see the face of the man, but it is abstracted due to the texture. This work by Betsy Damon also seems to have a rough, uneven texture even though it is actually smooth. The artist used small dots or blotches of color to show greenery, water, highlights, and shadows. This print uses a map as the background, and it looks as if you lean in far enough you could fall into the water. Now that we have looked at some ways artists use texture, let's think about how we can create our own artwork about texture. Look around your house and see how many textures you can find. You can look for fuzzy pillows, a prickly plant, a rough ceiling or wall, or maybe even a food with a textured skin like an avocado. See if you can pick one and try to recreate it visually through lines, shapes, and color. Or maybe you have some fabric or paper with a texture that you'd like to use as material. I'm going to try it out and let's see how it works. For this prompt, I decided to reuse one of the pages I already had in my sketchbook because I thought it would be a perfect starting point. The page I used had some pieces of cardboard already glued down on it. I had, to plan I had planned to use it for something else, but I never did, so I figured I would use it to create even more texture on my page. While on the topic of reusing things, I thought it would be fun to use some of the leftover paints I have. If anyone has ever used acrylic paint, you would know that there is always a little bit left over when you get to the end of the tube that is either hard to get out or not enough to use for something else. I decided to use my tubes of paint that had almost run out. I put the paint on my palette and grabbed a spoon. I have seen artists in the past use a technique that I would describe as globs of paint. When it dries, it creates a unique texture and every glob looks different. I used the spoon to try out this technique and started applying the paint to the rectangle squares. I tried to alternate the colors to give the piece a unique look. This project was so much fun because you really don't know what each glob is going to look like and they're all different. Since the paint is so thick, it took a little bit to dry, so I was careful not to touch it because I didn't want to mess it up. Whenever it did dry, it was so fun to run my fingers across the surface. There were so many different textures. Some were smooth, others were bumpy, and some were spiky. It was interesting to see how many textures could be created using the same technique. 
I definitely recommend trying this out if you have any extra paint left over or even if you don't and want to see how yours would turn out. Let's check in with the rest of the team and see how they use texture in their art. All right, so we're talking about textures this week. For my project, I'm gonna focus on implied textures and give myself a little bit of a challenge. First, I'm gonna draw six squares on my page. Then I decided to make it a little more fun and outline them with color. I thought of six different textures from nature to depict in each box. I chose tree bark, fur, sand, rocky, feathers, and spiky. Now, I know those aren't all technically titles of textures, but each one is certainly evocative of a specific feeling or texture. For instance, feathers have a unique, soft, delicate, and fluffy texture. Tree bark has a rough, knobby texture. Now, not all artists will tell you this, but I absolutely looked at examples as I was working on these. Reference photos are an important resource for most artists, so never hesitate to jump on Google and look for photographs or even other artists' renderings. It's one of the best ways to learn how to draw, and it's not cheating in the least. So shake off any fear and use all these wonderful resources around you to help. If it wasn't raining outside, I also could have gone outside and drawn a tree from observation. All right. So as I worked here, I just tried to recreate the textures as best I could. Some were more successful than others, and that's okay too. A lot of times it helps to think about how the texture would feel and then mimic that with your hand. For instance, when I drew fur, I used quick, light strokes, like the individual hairs that make up fur. For the sand, I made a million tiny pricks on the paper. Adding texture to the page with small dots, just like the grains of sand. The rocky texture took by far the longest to draw. There were so many little shapes to outline with my pen. Since the individual rocks are smooth, the texture is really made by the areas in between the rocks. So it was especially important that I take the time to define each little pebble. Even though it took forever and made my hand hurt, I think it ended up being my favorite texture of the six. Feathers ended up being a little bit like fur, except instead of all of the hairs pointing in one direction, the strands of the feather all come out from one central spine. My pen strokes were similar to fur, but went in different directions, depending on where they were situated on the spine. Lastly, I tried spiky, and in my mind, this was a bunch of porcupine quills. So like fur or feathers, I used quick light strokes, but in a V shape so that they had a sharp point at the end. This is a really fun way to approach texture. I think I'll try this again with other kinds of textures. This would even be a fun game to play with friends and challenge each other to try new implied textures. For this final project, I wanted to try to recreate a technique I used to be really good at. Years ago, I was very skilled with using colored pencils, so I wanted to try using them to create a very realistic, smooth looking texture. I took a picture of a spoon and used that as my source material. I drew out the spoon's outline in a very light gray, then just started coloring it according to what I saw on the picture. My high school art teacher always told me to draw what you see, not what you know. So I remember that, especially when I'm working with color. You wouldn't think green and purple could be used to make a metallic silver color, but they can. I blended all the colors I decided to use until they looked as seamless as possible. Once I was done, I blended it all over a little more with my white colored pencil, then added the black shadow underneath the spoon figure. I enjoyed coloring this spoon so much that I actually ended up posting it on my Instagram account. I hope you have as much fun creating a texture piece as I did. Thanks for tuning in. Online Art Club, wow, I can't believe that this video is the last project for this spring. For this week's theme, texture, I decided to use actual texture in my work. I will use colored sand, paper, markers, and sequins on old clothing to express diverse textures. You will need a washable glue as well. 
First, I will draw a sketch with a black marker. I thought it would be fun to draw the coolest design of my spaceship. Now I will start to color it using various materials. I put glue on the window of the spaceship and sprinkled blue colored sand. Please do not touch the sand while the glue is drying. And then I will decorate my spaceship with vivid sequins. I cut out sequins from my old clothing. Please ask an adult to help you with the scissors. Then I glued sequins on the sketch. Oh, I love these colors. Again, I sprinkled yellow sand on the star. And I just started to tear up the paper and glue them on the sketch. This is a torn paper mosaic. These two stars are now showing us the same yellow color but different textures. Then I glued a light green paper mosaic on the spaceship. One of the great things about this approach is you can mix any textures as you want. With markers, I painted some parts of the sketch. Then I put more sand on the rest of the spaceship. Here is the finished project. Using diverse materials was really fun and I got these fascinating textures. This is a super fun project for wrapping up your spring semester. Thank you so much for joining us in Online Art Club. We would love to see what you create, so post your artwork with the hashtag Palmer Online Art Club. See you next time.